like to show you another example of a Western Pleasure Horse demonstrating excellent performance. This five-year-old quarter horse mare has won numerous championships. She has a good rhythm at the walk, looking through the bridle nicely. Her nose is in front of vertical slightly, but yet she's still responsive to the rider's cues. Now let's watch the transition from the walk to the jog. As you can tell, this mare moved forward with very little visible cue from the rider. Transitions are very important in the Western Pleasure class. It shows how broke the horse is to the rider's cues. Now we'll move right up and show you a transition from the jog into the lope. With very little visible cue from the rider, the horse steps directly into the lope. The more visible the cue to the judge, the less the overall picture is. And of course, showmanship in Western Pleasure is a very important part of the class. It certainly separates the top horses from the ones that place in the middle of the class. In any transition, we're looking for the horse to change gates without changing the frame of his body. I feel the best asset this horse is presenting us is his consistency. From the time she's entered the arena, until this point, she has not changed her frame, her attitude, or her way of going. A consistent performer is a horse that performs at three gates with the same speed and frame as he moves around the arena. Now that we've watched these three horses perform, let's focus in on the movement of the Western Pleasure Horse, and we'll begin with a walk. At the walk, we're looking for a definite four-beat gait. In other words, each leg would hit the ground at a different time. At the walk, the gait will go left rear, left front, right rear, right front. With the assistance of our wraps, we can see red, green, black, purple. Let's look again. Red, green, black, purple. At the walk, we want him flat-footed, a good four-beat walk. The horse, we want him alert, not walking too slow, nor walking too fast where he's prancing. The next of the three gates we're going to look at is the jog. At the jog, the horse has a two-beat cadence. The diagonal legs move and hit the ground precisely at the same time. As you can tell with this horse, the red bandages hit the ground at the same time, and the black bandages hit the ground at the same time. In other words, left rear, right front, right rear, left front. Let's take a look and see. Red, black, red, black. Pretty easy to see. A real nice horse, real good cadence. What we're looking for in the Western Pleasure Horse today. Two of the most important parts of movement are cadence and rhythm. Cadence is the precise moment that the feet strike the ground or the footfalls. It's important to have a good cadence. Without a good cadence, we cannot have a horse that performs well nor places in the Western Pleasure class. Now I'd like to show you a horse at the lope. This horse shows us terrific engagement, good cadence and rhythm. A very balanced horse here. We can tell that he's enjoying his job. Because of the engagement behind, this horse is able to lift his shoulder and place his front foot out in front of him in the fashion that we desire. At the lope, we have a three-beat cadence. The first beat of the cadence is the right hind foot. That pushes the horse off the ground and starts the lope. The second beat would be the left rear and the right front, and the third beat is the left front foot. With the assistance of our wraps, we can see black, purple, red. Black, purple, red. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Notice we have a slight pause between three and one each time. Here's another example of a good horse at the lope. I'd like to show you this horse because of her softness and gracefulness as she covers the ground. Just look at this horse, how effortlessly she moves forward. Her head and neck are in a very relaxed position. Let's look at the engagement this horse shows us behind. 
Notice how she's using her back, hip, and hind leg to move forward. And of course, because of her balance on her hind leg, she's lifting her with her and able to move her shoulder forward, placing her front end out in front of her without using much knee. Uh, because pleasure is a great sport. It's, 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 uh, it's really uh, changed over the years. Movement hasn't changed. One thing that hasn't changed is movement. A good mover years ago is still a good mover today. Training has changed the, the horses. They're a lot more broke now than they used to be. They're uh, a lot more maneuverable. They're great horses. We've got some great horse trainers out there. Maybe the presentation of the horses uh, hasn't changed for the better. We'd like to see the presentation maybe change a little bit. We think it helped the class. And that's what we see as judges more, is presentation of the horses. And we're going to talk about that a lot today. Uh, <clears throat> because pleasure is a, a, a sport that a lot of people get started, and then they go to other events. And if they learn how to, to, uh, to ride these horses properly then, and show them, then they go into the, to the reining, the cow horse, the western riding, the trail, and they go into a lot of other events. And so we really want to talk about this today and what we see is as, as good horses and, and horses that are good horses, but maybe they could be better. So we're going to start. Uh, Dale, do you want to? Throw I, I believe everything that Alex just said revolves around one thing on what we'd probably like to get across here this morning is that we believe the Western pleasure horses, like the platform horse or the foundation for some other Western classes. Uh, for instance, the Western riding or the, the trail or the horsemanship, just like the hunter under saddle is to the working hunter or the hunter hack. So the characteristics that we look for in the really good Western pleasure horse ought to all also be the things that would carry them on to these other events. And we're going to watch these horses walk. Let's, let's just look around and, and see what they're doing. And, and maybe we can have... Um, have some of them do some of our typical walks that we have today. For instance, like John's presentation right there to me, this horse isn't walking. He's hesitating. You, you know, if I'm standing in here judging, I want you to show me my, your horse. You, you know, when you start hiding him, I figure there's something wrong with him. And that's what I look at when I see that. It's like he's hiding the walk from me, so how can I judge it? And if some, maybe this will help a few people when you're showing your horse that, that when a judge is looking, he wants to see you show your horse. Now that's a lot better. When we're judging and someone's loping down the rail <clears throat> and they break gate, no one has a problem with us as a judge if we put that horse at the bottom of the card or, or off the card. But... If they're walking, and John, give us a little little typical break of gate at the walk. That's a break of gate. What's the difference in that in a horse that breaks gate when he's loping or jogging? It's still a break of gate. A horse has to keep his natural rhythm and cadence and That's right. movement while he's walking, just like he does when he's jogging or loping. And these are things we see, but people don't think about. Well, I had a good ride. I had a full drape, and my horse was slow. I don't know why he didn't place me. Well, there's reasons, and that's, that's one reason there that sometimes he's not placed. Troy's horse here is, is he's real flat-footed. He's going to pass a lot of horses that are in the classes today walking. I mean, so what? He's very relaxed, he's walking, he's, he's looking through the bridle, and so many times when a horse is left alone and let walk, then they're going to have better expression. 